Why, hello there. My name is Mackenzie Child, and this is Dev Tips. So Travis and I go way back. Well, we first started talking forever ago when he asked me to do an interview here on Dev Tips. Uh, if you're curious about how I got my start or uh, how I, as a designer, was able to teach myself how to code using uh, Rails, uh, you can click here and watch that interview. But over the next few weeks, I have the pleasure of teaching uh, what I've learned and giving you an introduction to the Ruby on Rails framework. So for those who don't know, uh, Ruby on Rails is a fantastic web framework that allows you to build powerful and robust web applications very quickly. Uh, it's been battle tested and proven by big companies like uh, Twitter, Hulu, Groupon, Shopify, just to name a few. So at the end of this five part series, you're gonna have built a simple uh, Rails blogging application with dynamic content, uh, at which point you're gonna be in a good position to dive deeper into Ruby and the Ruby on Rails framework. So the project files I use in this little series will be available to the members of the uh, DevTips Patreon community, which I'll tell you more about at the end of this video. But for now, let's jump in and talk about uh, what Rails is, how it got its start, uh, a little history lesson, if you will. So what exactly is Ruby on Rails? Well, Rails is an open source web framework that's written in the Ruby programming language, if you couldn't already guess that from the name. Everything in Rails is designed to make your life as a developer easier, and it does that by making assumptions as to what you'll need uh, when you create a new web application. Basically, Rails allows you to write less code while accomplishing more. So Rails was created in 2003 by this guy, uh, David Heinemeyer Hansen, or DHH, as he's known around the interwebs. So Rails was sort of a byproduct of DHH's work on the project management tool we all know today as Basecamp. Um, in 2004, he extracted the source of Rails and released it as an open source project. So it was in 2005 when Rails 1.0 was officially released. And in 2006, uh, Rails really took off when Apple uh, decided to bundle it with the OSX Leopard operating system. So if we fast forward 10 years and over 50,000 commits uh, to the Rails source later, Rails is on version 4.2 and has been battle tested by companies like Twitter, Groupon, Hulu, and Shopify, just to name a few. So there are three principles that have guided Rails since the beginning um, and made it into the awesome framework we all know today. Uh, first of which is the MVC or model view controller architecture. Next is convention over configuration. And then finally we have dry or don't repeat yourself. So the models inside the MVC architecture are Ruby classes that handle the business logic and do the heavy lifting of your application. Uh, they talk with the database, validate data, etc. So views inside the MVC architecture are templates that render data from the model and handle the logic of the presentation. Basically, it's what the user sees and interacts with. So a controller sits in between the model and the view uh, of your application controlling the flow. So a controller will do things like handle requests and uh, initiate changes into your model. So convention over configuration or the Rails way is a set of assumptions or defaults as to the best way to do things. So Rails is designed to encourage certain ways of doing things and even discouraging others, um, all of which is an effort to allow you to write less code while at the same time achieving more from your application. Hey, so I just want to say thank you for watching this. Uh, be sure to join us next week when we go through the process of setting up our development environment with Ruby and uh, the Ruby on Rails framework. So this video was of course sponsored by the awesome patrons of DevTips um, who all have pledged an amount of their choosing to help make uh, each of these videos possible. So patrons get to enjoy these videos a few days early, and on this particular series, they get access to uh, the project code that we're gonna be creating together in this series. To join me as a patron and support DevTips, be sure to check out uh, patreon.com slash devtips. Now, I also create videos on my own channel, which you can check out at youtube.com slash mckinseychild. Um, and until next week, when I take you through the process of setting up your development environment, Keep on hacking, my friends.